Hi there, thanks so much for joining me today. This video is my face product declutter. Um, so anything that goes on my cheeks or is like a base product will be a part of this portion of the declutter. I've already done eyeshadows and lip products. I'm gonna start with the highlighters first because this is the part of my collection that I feel the most overwhelmed with. I feel like I just have so much highlighter and I don't really have a chance to use the vast majority of it on a regular basis. So um, I already have like a couple in my head as I was laying these out. I already know that there are some that I'm going to get rid of. So I am going to just get started. The first one is a product that I tried to make work. I just don't really enjoy using and it's the Flower Day Glow. Um, it's in the shade Stunner. So I think it's the lighter of the two shades. And this is beautiful, like it looks beautiful in the pan, but I just don't enjoy putting this on my face. I feel like it's too sticky. And even though it is like a gorgeous product, I just don't find myself wanting to use it. So um, even like as a mixer, it's just like a heavy type of formula. So no, I thought I might try to pan it, but I just don't really want to do that. So I'm going to declutter this. Same with this Charlotte Tilbury one. This is a massive highlighter that I got in my mystery box. So I didn't purchase this for full price. I got it as part of a mystery box and it is a beautiful highlighter, um, but it's just like a champagne -y gold color. Like there's really not anything like super special about it. And it is kind of like a thicker formula. I don't know how to explain it. Like I have um, other highlighters that are more like lightweight even though this is a beautiful color, it's just like not anything special and the formula is also not anything special to me. So I'm gonna pass this on while it's still very new. Also, I have these two liquid highlighters from NYX and one of them is more of a pinky one. It's in the shade Sunbeam and then the other one, Gleam, is more of a gold. I'm actually almost finished with Sunbeam. I use this like as a foundation mixer to add more luminosity and more of like a natural finish to my foundations. I really only have a couple uses left out of here. I was really trying to squeeze out product the last time I used it. So I will finish this one and it'll be in my empties soon. The other one is just a little bit too dark. I don't want to use it as a mixer because it is so dark um, and it just doesn't really act as a highlighter on my skin and I don't really ever get tan enough for that to be something that could give me a tan or something that would make me look highlighted. So what I'm going to do is pass this on to a friend who has a deeper skin tone. Another one I'm going to pass on is this. It had a different product in there. It was like a cream highlight from ColourPop. I love the packaging of it. It's the Maleficent packaging from their Disney Villains collection. And what I did is I repressed a um, loose highlighter powder from Wet n Wild. Oops, I repressed it and I put it in here. This is just like so blinding and metallic. That is just not something that I want to put on my face anymore. I mean, it's stunning. It's beautiful, but it is so metallic and blinding and that is just not my style anymore. That's just not something that I enjoy looking like on a regular basis. So I am going to pass this on. It is beautiful though. I mean, like it's making me do a double take like, oh, should I keep it? But honestly, no, I'm never going to put that on my face. But if you have a loose highlighter that you would like to turn into a pressed powder, I do have a video where I show you how to do it with some vegetable glycerin. Um, so if you'd like to see how that is done in action, I do have a video showing that. Now let's talk about some that I'm definitely keeping. This Beauty Light Wand in the shade Spotlight from Charlotte Tilbury. This is a beautiful highlight. This is also very luminous, but in a much more natural, glowy way. I wore this on my wedding day. I think it's a beautiful color and a beautiful um, level of shine, a beautiful formula. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. A nice, subtle, more everyday highlighter that I enjoy using is this Essence Pure Nude one. I am gonna hold on to this one. I think this is like a beautiful, natural highlight. And I'm also gonna keep this one from Charlotte Tilbury from the Filmstar Bronze and Glow, the light to medium version. I've already used up the bronzer. I've hit pan on the highlighter and I think I'm gonna try to pan this next year. It's a beautiful, like champagne gold highlight. This is a new addition to my collection. It's the Nude Gasm palette from Charlotte Tilbury. It does have a golden highlighter in there. I did a full face of Charlotte Tilbury video a little while ago, and I did this highlighter on one side, and then I did the other highlighter on the other side. 
and I feel like they were very, very similar. I think the formula for this one is just a little bit thinner. I think maybe just the tiniest bit more forgiving. Um, it's much lighter of a formula than that one. On the cheeks, they look very similar though. So I'll hold on to this one. And I'll also hold on to this Becca Berlin Glow Highlighter. I did pan one of these already. It's one of the few cool toned highlighters that I think is very, very flattering and beautiful. It's a very unique color and it is a discontinued product that I can't get again. Um, so I would like to hold on to it. I did pan a full one of these already, so I'm glad to have another one in my collection. As for these two ABH um, highlights, these are from the Gleam palette. These are beautiful. I do really like these both a lot, but I have had these for years and years. I never reach for them, and I really don't ever reach for like light pink, cool toned, silvery products anymore. I go for like a champagne or a really light gold or something that's very close to my skin tone, like a beigey highlight. I really don't reach for these types of colors anymore. So this one from Coco Kind, it's the My Light Rose Skin Nourishing Highlighter. This one is kind of unique because it's kind of like a rose gold. It doesn't look too dark on my skin. Like when you rub it in, it just looks like it's a part of my skin and it is a really beautiful like healthy sheen. Are you going to be able to see? I don't know. You might not be able to see, but it does look really beautiful in real life. So I'm going to hold on to that one. So I have three of these mini Becca highlights. This one is in Rose Quartz. It's a light pink color. And then this one is Vanilla Quartz, which is kind of like a white gold. And then this last one is Champagne Pop which is um, kind of like a champagne gold. And I really like the formula of the Becca highlighters. I know Becca is no longer a makeup brand, but you can still get some of the shades from this formula through Smashbox now. And I'm just really glad to have the minis of these. I think these are all really beautiful. I love the formula. They are more of like a natural looking highlight. They are very luminous. They're just not as blinding as that other one <laughs> that I was talking about. Um, so I'm going to hold on to these. I think these are great and I love having minis. This one from Melt, this is definitely one of the stronger highlights that I have. This is in the shade Stargazer. It's a beautiful gold. Um, it is one that can be sheared out though. And so whenever you sheer it out, it does leave like a really beautiful gleam on the skin. Really like the formula of this one, definitely keeping. Now for these ones, I've had these two from Laura Geller for so long. I do really like the formula Peach Glow and Charming Pink. But Charming Pink is like a cooler tone pink. And I, I have a similar shade to it in the Flower Beauty one. But that light pink one um, is very similar to Charming Pink. It's maybe a little less cool toned than the Laura Geller one. So it's like, and I definitely do want to keep this peachy one. I think this is a beautiful color as well. So I'm going to hold on to Peach Glow definitely. But it's like... Do I want to hold on to this palette or do I want to hold on to Charming Pink? I think I like that pink shade from this palette a little bit more than Charming Pink. So I'm going to pass this one on. This was a favorite of mine for so long, but like I said, I just don't go for those cool tone silvery types of shades anymore. And I, if I want a pinky highlight, I can use this one. Plus I have the Rose Quartz one. So... I am decluttering seven highlighters and I'm keeping 15 highlighters because I count each of these as their own. Part of me still feels like this is a lot of highlighter, but I do plan on panning this one and then I have some smaller mini ones as well. So I feel like this is good. It's definitely much better than what I had before and I'm excited to just have a more curated highlighter collection in general. So that's everything for highlighters. Let's move on to bronzers and contours. Okay, so these are all of my bronzer and contour products. I don't really have that many, especially compared to past years. This palette here is very new to me, this bronzer and contour product. Those are new to me, so I'm going to hold on to these. And I'm in the process of using this one from Bare Minerals. I've made a pretty significant dent. I don't know if you can tell. Like, this is a baked product, and there's definitely, like, a dent in there. So that one... Who knows, maybe I'm close to hitting pan on it, I'm not sure. But it's a really nice light bronzer. I have um, a couple ones that are similar to that. This one from Becca, this is in the shade Bali Sands. This is also a beautiful light bronzer for me. I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then this one is newer. I don't even know if I've actually tried this on my face yet, but this is from Nabla. It's in the shade Ambra. And this is like, I don't know, I'm guessing it's a baked formula, but that's a beautiful color. 
yeah beautiful neutral tone so um, I do prefer wearing lighter bronzers I don't like going too dark I used to love a ton of bronzer but I've definitely changed where I really don't use that much on my face anymore so I don't go through bronzer as quickly as I used to um, I can pass this one on this is like a contour product from Catrice this is very old I don't even know how long I've had it I think I decluttered it and then um, my mom like gave it back to me or told me I could have it back. This contour shade has a lot of like red in it, so I don't really feel like that works for me. Um, and the highlighter like isn't very much of a highlighter. It's kind of just like a chalky satin. Yeah, it doesn't really have any anything in it that makes me want to hold on to it. So I'll pass this one on. This contour stick from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the light to medium version. It looks really really dark in the tube. Ooh, and it's very messy, um, but it does blend out really nicely. I've only used this one time in a full face of Charlotte Tilbury video that I recently did. I'm very new to liquid contour, liquid bronzer, and so just having one product like that is fine, uh, but I would like to wear this a little bit more. It was really easy to blend out, so I feel like once I figure out how to use it correctly. <laughs> I think it'll be really nice. This one from Marc Jacobs, this is like broken. I've repressed it. Um, it's just like a very, not high maintenance, but just like difficult to keep from being a big mess because it doesn't close all the way and it's repressed so it's very fragile. It is also a very dark bronzer so I really can't wear a ton of it. Part of me would like to pan this. I would like to finish this. So I'm going to hold on to it and see if I can't make some progress on it next year. I have two from The Balm. One of them is Bahama Mama. This is like an olive -y bronzer and then this one also I think has an olive undertone it's in the shade Oliver and this is like from their anti-orange collection I'm not even sure if they make this one anymore um, but I like both of these and I could see myself uh, at least using Oliver regular maybe not Bahama Mama because that is a bit dark but I do like that undertone a lot I think it's nice so I'm going to hold on to both of those so yeah the only one from my bronzers that I'm passing on for sure is this one from Catrice, but I do feel like I can realistically um, get a lot of use out of all these other bronzers. Like, I don't feel like this is out of control. So let's move on to blushes. Okay, so these are all of my blushes. I do know that there are a couple that I am ready to pass on. The first one is this Essence Blush Up. This is like an ombre type of blush. It is really pretty. It's like hot pink into orange but I never reach for this. I really never have a need for something this bright. I'm also going to pass on this Jordana eyeshadow. They don't, I don't think this brand exists anymore. I purchased this because this was a dupe for Taj Mahal from NARS, and I did really like this at one point. I just don't really like this type of color on my cheeks anymore. If I'm going to go for a peachy color, I will go for Luminoso or I'll go for the peach from that Charlotte Tilbury palette. That's what I'm missing. So this is the Nude Gasm palette. This has a peachier blush in there. Also this one from Cover FX, this also has like peachy tones as well. So if I want something like that, I can use other ones in my collection. So I'm going to pass on this one as well. I am going to keep the palette from Charlotte Tilbury and I am going to keep Luminoso. I actually think I'm, I'm going to try to pan this at some point. It's pretty flat. Like I've already put a lot of work in on it. So that's a beautiful color. So I'm going to hold on to that one for sure. Definitely holding on to Beloved by Makeup Revolution. This is also one they don't make anymore. It's a stunning color. I love the formula. I love the color so much. Definitely keeping that one. Also this one from Hourglass. Look at this sneak peek. This is like almost done. I do not have a lot left in there. Maybe like two more uses. Ugh, I'm so excited. So this one's almost, almost done anyway. And then my other hourglass blush that I have, this is in the shade Mood Exposure. This one is really pretty too. I There was like a three month period after I got this as a birthday present earlier this year that I only wore this. This is a beautiful like mobby plummy type of color. I recently wore this Ecstasy blush by Charlotte Tilbury in a full face of Charlotte Tilbury video that I did and I wasn't sure if this would even show up on my skin but when I put it on I actually really liked it a lot. I do like more matte satin blushes. I definitely prefer that over shimmery blushes um, which is why the majority of the blushes in my collection are either matte or satin. Um, so definitely holding on to this. I'm glad that it does show up on my skin. This was another product that I got in a mystery box. 
Same with the PYT Beauty cheek color. This is in the shade Heartbeat. This is definitely one of my more cool toned blushes, but it is a beautiful formula. I really like the color. It does look deeper on my skin than it looks like it does in the pan. Definitely gonna keep that one. Another one I'm gonna keep is whenever I'm going for something very bronzy, I use this bronzer here from Urban Decay. This is a really orangey bronzer, so I don't use it as a traditional bronzer. Um, I just use it as like a bronzy blush. I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one from Ofra, this is a duo. It's the Snuggle Up Blush Highlighter Duo. And I think the shades are, I mean, I think this is Rodeo Drive, perhaps. And I think this is Bellini. I'm gonna pass this on, I never use it. It's a pretty color combo, but like I said, I have other peachy blushes and I have other like goldy champagne highlighters in my collection too. So I'm gonna pass on that. This one from Cover Effects. Um, I don't really use it all the time, but I do really like it and I'm gonna hold on to it. I think it's a beautiful color, beautiful formula. The Satin Touch Blush in the shade Satin Love. This is one of my favorite shades. This and Buxom Seychelles. They are very, very similar. I really like both of them. The one from Buxom is definitely more glowy. Um, the one from Essence is definitely more satiny, but they're very, very similar in shade range. So if you have one, I don't think you need the other. And I like both of them. I'm gonna keep both of them. Now for this one from Essence. This is like an incredibly, incredibly light color to the point where it doesn't super show up on my skin unless I really, really build it. But I also don't wanna get rid of it at the same time. Cause I feel like it makes for a good shade for whenever I put too much blush on, which I am known to do that. I can use this to tone down the amount of blush on my skin without using like a face powder um, because sometimes then that like takes away too much or it like makes it look weird. I don't know. I, st I still kind of want to hold on to this. And then the Flower Blush Flower Pot in the shade Spiced Petal. This is a beautiful matte blush. I really like this one a lot. So I'm going to hold on to this one. So yeah, I kept the vast majority of them, but one of them is almost empty and the other ones are shades and formulas that I really, really love. So let's do a final count. Okay, so I'm keeping 14 and I'm passing on three. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.